Hey, welcome back carnivores and welcome fans of The Food Dictator. So today in collaboration with The Food Dictator, I'm gonna show you the best way to make a goat leg. Stick around. Okay, carnivores, I'm super excited today because this is the first and what I hope is going to be a long and successful collaboration with The Food Dictator. Now, if you're not already a reader and follower of The Food Dictator, this is a fantastical blog. Uh, it's a food blog that I've been following for a while where Jonathan, who also goes by Generalissimo or TFD The Food Dictator, writes some amazing recipes from all over the world captures wonderful heritages and uses all kinds of unique ingredients. And so in collaboration with him, I'm gonna show you the best way to make this goat leg. Now, this is a uh, roughly five pound goat leg. It's from Shannon Creek Farm. Of course, was raised as a vegan or we wouldn't be cooking it here. And, and by the way, for those of you who are new from the Food Dictator, you don't know Eat More Vegans, this is all about meat. So uh, we use grass and grain fed beef and pigs and chickens that were raised on corn and pasture raised goats and sheep and all kinds of other animals. They were all raised as vegan and I show you how to cook and we all of course eat them, hence the name, Eat More Vegan. So let's go ahead and dive right in. I'm gonna go ahead and get this package open. So this goat leg is a beautiful piece of meat. Not too much outside fat. We're gonna need to do a little bit of trimming. Goat also, by the way, is a super lean meat, so the way we treat it's gonna be really important. But let's go ahead and get started uh, trimming. I'm gonna leave some of the fat on, but I'm definitely gonna take off this silver skin and some of the hard fat that's just hanging out. Okay, this looks great. So let's go ahead and get some salt on it and let that salt absorb into the meat while we get ready to make our marinade. Okay, I'm gonna go throw this in the refrigerator, keep it cool, let that salt absorb while we make the marinade. Okay, let's get started on our marinade. Now, I told you that the food dictator is into complex and exotic recipes. Have you ever seen a pile of ingredients like this before here on the show? Uh, pretty impressive, but I am excited about this flavor profile. So this marinade is called the Food Dictator's Marinade of Unmatched Splendor. So let's get started uh, working on this. And by the way, don't worry about writing all this stuff down because I'll put a link to his food blog with all the ingredients and the recipe uh, in the description. So I'm gonna start by firing up my stove. We're gonna toast a couple of spices. Now as this heats up, I'm gonna put in two teaspoons of whole allspice berries and four teaspoons of cumin seeds. And we're just gonna toast these until I can smell the aroma because these get really aromatic as they toast. Okay, smells like they're about done. So I'm gonna take these and I'm gonna dump them in uh, my blender here. Okay, let's get rid of the stove and move on to the next step. Okay, so we've got our toasted ingredients here in the blender food processor. And I'm just gonna start by grinding those up. Okay, now I'm gonna add some of the dry ingredients. So I've got four teaspoons of sweet paprika. I've got two teaspoons of chipotle chili powder. I've got four teaspoons of dried thyme. Two tablespoons of oregano. And one of the most fun ingredients, there's actually three tablespoons here of shiitake dried mushroom powder, which uh, you can get at gourmet stores or on Amazon. I'll put a link uh, down in the description. Okay, now let's put our fresh ingredients in. So I've got a half a cup of uh, fresh mint that I've removed the leaves from. 
I've got four jalapeno peppers that I've uh, seeded and roughly diced. I've got one uh, small onion, maybe medium-sized onion that I've roughly diced. And the dicing, by the way, is just to make it easier for the food processor to incorporate the ingredients. Got half a dozen diced green onion scallions and 16 whole garlic cloves. What, you guys are vampires? You're afraid of a little garlic? Come on, it's only 16. Okay, now let's get some liquid in here. I'm gonna start with a quarter cup of white vinegar. And now I'm gonna put in a quarter cup of balsamic vinegar. A half a cup of Worcestershire, Worcestershire sauce. A half a cup of olive oil. And then finally, I'm gonna juice two lemons. Okay, and one final blend to get our marinade together. And now we have our marinade. We have the Food Dictator's Marinade of Unmatched Splendor. I can tell you, it's a marinade of unmatched aroma. I wish you guys could smell this. Let's go ahead and get it on the goat leg. So look at what the salt did to the leg of goat. It has, it's gone, right? So it pulled out all this moisture Bunch of it evaporated in the refrigerator, and then it pulled all that salt back in. None of those salt crystals that you saw are still there. So we know that this leg is gonna be able to retain moisture, which is really important given that it's so lean. So let's go ahead and get our marinade of unmatched splendor on the goat. And let's go ahead and get it coated. And this does smell as good as it looks. Now, I'm gonna put this in a vacuum seal bag because when we vacuum seal and we're marinating, the vacuum actually pulls the fibers open in the meat and allows those flavors to penetrate. So if we want our goat leg to be the goat leg of unmatched splendor, we want that flavor to go all the way to the middle. So let's go ahead and get this in, uh, in our vacuum seal bag. All right, let's get the sealer out and get it sealed. Well, hopefully the Generalissimo would be proud. We have our marinade of unmatched splendor. We have our fully trimmed uh, goat leg uh, vacuum sealed in here so that the fibers are open, that marinade can get in. I've got some leftover marinade that we'll be using as a base and as a sauce on the final goat leg. So all I've got to do now is put this back in the refrigerator and let it marinate for 24 hours until it's time to cook tomorrow. Of course, for me, it'll be overnight. For you, it'll be just a couple of seconds. I'll be right back. So this has been marinating in its vacuum bag for 24 hours. Let's uh, take a look and see what we got. It looks really good. I can see that the color of the meat has changed a little bit. It has absorbed a lot of this marinade overnight. I think it's working. So let's uh, go back to our wonderful marinade here and I'm gonna pull some out and save this for later after it's cooked. And the rest we're gonna use as a base, as a mop for the goat while it's cooking. So I'll just set this aside. Now, the smoker's up to temperature. I'll meet you at the grill. Hey, welcome to the backyard. If you've been here before, you recognize Yoda, our Yoda YS1500 uh, pellet smoker. Uh, he's running at 250 degrees, uh, running a combination of oak and cherry pellets today. I think that's gonna make a really good compliment to the goat. So let's go ahead and get the goat leg onto Yoda. I'm gonna put it on and I'm gonna put a temperature probe right into the thickest part so I can keep track of the cook while we're going. Okay, so 
so that's going to take on smoke for several hours it's going to be a nice long cook but i'm going to be back every hour to baste and mop it with that wonderful marinade so uh we'll see you guys in a bit hey it's been about an hour i'm going to give this a quick mop by the way these are two steaks that I did just now on Darth as part of another video, a uh, to brine or not to brine, comparing dry brining. So if you're not already a subscriber, make sure you subscribe so you don't miss that one. All right, let's give this one a baste. All right, that looks pretty good. I'm gonna be back and mop every hour. You don't need to come back for that, but I'll see you when it's time to wrap. Okay, it's been three and a half hours total. I've mopped it three times, and we finally reached a point that we call the stall. The stall is when the meat reaches a temperature where it's starting to push out moisture, and that moisture is evaporating, which brings down the temperature of the meat, and it's gonna stay at a constant level. Let me show you what this looks like. So here you see that there's a light colored line that's the temperature of the smoker and the dark colored uh, yellow line that is the temperature of the goat leg. And you see how it's leveled off there? That's how we know that we reach the stall. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna wrap it in foil and then put that foil in a tray to capture whatever juices. And that's, they call it the Texas crutch when you're doing it with brisket or when you're doing it with a pork butt. Same thing works on any big uh, cut of meat. So now it's gonna to start to braise in its own juices. It's gonna to help to push through that stall. And uh, the next time we open the grill after this, it's gonna be after we're at 200 degrees and we're testing for tenderness at that point. So let's go ahead and get this thing wrapped. Okay, that's gonna take a couple of hours, but for you, it's only gonna be a couple of seconds. Be right back. Okay, it's been a little over two hours, and the app is telling me that we're over 200 degrees. So I'm gonna go check it and make sure that it's nice and tender. Assuming it is, I'm gonna wrap it in a towel, put it in a cooler, and let it rest for about a half an hour, and I'll meet you back in the kitchen. Hey, welcome back to the kitchen. I wish you guys could smell what it smells like in here. It smells so good. If you've been here before, you remember Leah, my nine-year-old daughter and food critic, and uh, most of the food that I, uh, I make, she likes, so she's gonna give you her honest opinion. And instead of me bringing a friend, Leah brought a friend. You wanna introduce your friend, Leah? This is Lindsay. Hi. And they go to school together, and Lindsay has never tasted anything like this before. And Leah has tasted this before, but not this cut. So girls, I made goat leg. Literally the leg of a goat. Like literally. Like literally have the I leg had, of a goat. Have I had goat leg before? You have not. You've had goat ribs and you've had goat chops and you've had a couple of different goat dishes, but you've never had this before. So this was an all day smoke. I did this with a chef called the food dictator. And he told me how to marinate it. So hopefully the marinade works out well. And I got a little extra sauce here for us. So you guys ready to try? Yes. Okay, so I'm gonna put a little bit in Leah's dish and a little bit 
here in Lindsay's dish. It and smells so good. It does, doesn't it? I mean, I just want to eat it all up for myself. <laughs> well, let's see how it tastes. Hopefully it tastes as good. And then this dish, who's this dish for, Leah? Them. That's right, this one's for you. You guys taste this. And uh, I've also got some of the sauce here we can dip in for a second bite if we want to try the sauce. And if you guys want, you can use, you can share my sauce. Okay, are we ready? Yes. All right, the old fashioned way, grab your fingers and take a taste. <laughs> it tastes a lot like brisket and beef. Yeah, a little more intense though, right? This is my second bite. I'm gonna All right, you're gonna, you're gonna go for the you sauce? All right, I'm gonna go try to it with heaven? the sauce. Yeah, it's good, right? <laughs> I think she likes it. Yeah. All right, let's take our second bite with the sauce. Mm. The sauce is really strong. Really intense, right? Probably not for kids. Yeah. Okay. It has a what little. What do you think? It has a little spice. A little spice. But you can taste a little bit of jalapeno in there. Yes. Do you like it? I love it. Okay, so not for some kids, but for other kids. Hey, we got to do our quick MTY. Moist. Scale of one to five. Definitely five. 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 Okay. Tender. I mean, it pulls apart, it's, right? It's super tender. Super tender and yummy. Definitely. All right, nailed it. All right, I hope you guys like this one. If you did, there's a video I wanna put right here where I made those goat ribs. I think you're really gonna enjoy that one. And if you've already seen that one, check this one out down here. And we'll see you next time on Eat, Eat More, More Vegans. Vegans.